The Puma Magnify 2 may not be a carbon shoe, a sexy shoe, whatever you want to call it, but it's a great daily trainer and Puma just adds another fantastic shoe to their lineup. Let's review it. Hey everyone and welcome back on channel, my name is Alex and in today's video we have the review of one of the shoes I really enjoyed discovering at the running event back in December last year in Austin, Texas, the Puma Magnify V2. I wasn't a huge fan of the Magnify V1, it was a good shoe, a solid design and I think the thinking behind the shoe was already quite solid but it didn't really work for me, it was a bit too firm. The combination of an EVA heel and the Nitro TPE forefoot foam made it a bit too clunky and a bit too, um, yeah, that's quite firm in the heel. Puma revisited the shoe, we have a new midsole, a new upper and overall a shoe that I think adds another fantastic um, layer of product to the Puma lineup. This is the Puma Magnify V2. This shoe was sent to us by Puma. Thanks to Puma for sending it. It will be available in July on topforrunning.com, running warehouse, all the links in the description, only in July. So uh, stay tuned and we will certainly communicate more about the shoe coming closer to the release date. Specs, we're looking at 40 millimeters in the heel, 10 millimeters drop. It's something very interesting to see companies going to the 40 millimeters limit despite it's not being you know, a racing shoe. 10 millimeters drop, I think it's a really, really nice um, combo, especially for daily trainers. US 11, 323 grams, not the lightest daily trainers out there. To give you a comparison, the Nimbus is at 290, 295. Uh, the Salomon Aeroglide, very light in this category, is at 260 grams in my size, somewhere there. Uh, so a bit heavier. Does it feel heavy when running? It does, to be honest, but that's not a great issue because the ride compensates for that. And overall, I'm not too interested in having, you know, very lightweight shoes for daily trainers. I don't really mind. So it's if it's something that matters to you, just, you know, be aware that it's a bit heavier, uh, but it shouldn't definitely be a deal breaker. Looking into the upper, Puma added a new engineered knitted uh, mesh here. Uh, there is a big trend in knits and um, Puma is going in that direction. I don't necessarily like knitted shoes when they have that sock type of upper. Here there is a tongue, there is a gusseted tongue or at least semi-gusseted tongue and I think the upper does a very very good job. It's probably the best upper Puma has in daily trainers. I like the, the upper of the Forever Run Nitro that you have up there but I think this is a bit better, a bit more simple um, but it works, it works really well. The padding is a tongue and the tongue is just what you need. Room in the forefoot is decent without being too much and overall the fit of the shoe is um, good, if not very good. So that would be, you know, seven, eight out of 10, although we don't give any, any scores here. You have some power tape overlay on the medial side of the shoe to give you a bit more structure and also to help with the stability. The reinforcement may seem like nothing, but it really does keep your foot in, in place quite nicely. Lockdown in the heel is very good. So overall fit really something quite good uh, in general. The lockdown in the heel is also quite good and that is helped with those um, sidewalls that you have here, power tape sidewalls. Again, adding the stability to the shoe. I will say it again at the end of the video in the conclusion, but this is a soft max cushion daily trainer that will work for people with mild and moderate pronation. Um, so overall, something also interesting for you out there, if you're pronating a bit and you're looking for something soft that will work for your foot strike and gait cycle, this may be a very solid contender. Looking into the midsole, Puma removed the EVA layer in the um, Magnify 1 and now we only have Nitro Foam with a 47C durometer. Uh, this is the durometer score in the seashore um, table. So quite a soft foam, 47 is uh, on the softer side of things when it comes to foams. This is the TPE nitrogen infused foam by Puma. It's one of the best foams you can find on the market at the moment, in my opinion. Lightweight, very interesting in terms of energy return, in terms of compression. And here the durometer being a bit softer, it works very well for that daily trainer that will save your legs. The ride of the shoe is very good. It is stunningly good, to be honest. I didn't expect it to be that good. It is soft, it is uh, not mushy, not plush. Just that softness that saves your legs, but has enough energy return, enough decompression of the foam to provide you with a bit of um, excitement when you're running, to be honest. And this is exactly it. It doesn't have a huge rocker in the, in the forefoot. It's a milled rocker. So if you're looking for something that rolls a bit better from heel to toe, this is probably not your best contender. But if you're heel striking and you don't want to have any slap, um, but just a nice toe off with some decent amount of foam underfoot, 
that's a good shoe. If you're midfoot to forefoot striking and you like to have that nice soft compression, but nothing too plush and nothing too inefficient, this is again a very good shoe. So I would only say that, you know, people that may not enjoy this shoe will be those of you who are looking for a more aggressive rocker, a very early rocker, which this shoe doesn't have. Other than that, I mean, it's a very, very good ride. And I would consider this shoe to be in my shoe rotation outside of reviews. You know, shoe reviewers have the shoes they, they review and then they have the personal shoe rotation that they use. And I would add this shoe to my personal shoe rotation for the, few, the next few months. Uh, because of how great it felt. Paces, I would say recovery up to some somewhere around tempo pace. Tempo pace, it becomes a bit clunky and you can start feeling the weight there. But many shoes that I use for recovery paces are not good at tempo pace. This one is, so kudos to Puma for coming up with that. Outsole, Puma Grip, one of the best grips in the industry. I say times and times over. Durability will be great, grip is great. So, you know, you can just buy the shoe eyes closed if you're living in uh, areas where the, the roads may be slippery or if you are using the, the rubber very quickly on your shoes, uh, this will definitely work for you. Stability, like I said, a soft shoe that works for mild and moderate pronators. Very interesting because not many of them do that. Competitors here, I would say Nimbus, Invincible, um, something like More V4 and I would probably hesitate between this and the Nimbus. The Nimbus being a bit more comfortable um, and way more expensive also, at least in the EU. The, this one is a bit more versatile and has such a better outsole. So I would be in between the two if I had to pick between these two in that max stack height daily trainers with soft foam. I hope it makes sense. 150 euros, 150 dollars coming out in July. Stay tuned for more um, on this shoe because I think we will compare it against some other shoes. It would make sense given how good I think it is. Let's link to the Nimbus 25 review. I, I think this could be a very solid comparison between the Magnify V2 and the Nimbus 25. So you will have the Nimbus 25 review right here. Enjoy your run today, enjoy your ride and go beyond your limits. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.